Hello, I am Kush Thodi and I will be presenting the topic, an emerging paradigm shift in trial design in oncology clinical trials. Advances in cancer research have led to an improved understanding of the molecular mechanisms of cancer and how the immune system responds to cancer. As the science behind the therapeutic interventions has grown, the clinical trial designs of phase one, two, and three have evolved as well. As you know, the primary objective of a phase one study is to assess safety profile of a drug. This is typically done via assessment of dose limiting toxicities. The commonly used phase one design in oncology can be categorized in three groups. Rule-based designs such as standard three plus three design or accelerated titration design, PK guided dose escalation design and model based designs. The traditional rule based designs are simple and easy to implement. These are relatively safe and clinical friendly. However, there are many drawbacks. First, there is a general lack of any statistical foundation which results in lower precision. Secondly, the three plus three design requires many escalation steps with doses that may be too low to be effective. This leads to suboptimal treatment in a large number of patients. Finally, the disk design may not be appropriate for molecularly targeted agents as the rule-based design works on a fundamental assumption of linear relationship between dosage and toxicity, which may not be necessarily true for molecular target agents. PK guided dose escalation design requires real-time PK measurement. This design works on the assumption that DLT can be predicted by plasma dose concentration. On contrast, model-based designs incorporate dose escalation that is guided by the mathematical model. Commonly used model-based designs include continual reassessment method and Bayesian model. Under model-based design, such as CRM, a target activity of toxicity is defined at baseline. A dose toxicity curve is established prior to patient enrollment. However, it has an advantage that it uses toxicity data from enrolled patients to modify curve as study proceeds. The important aspect to note that these model-based designs requires good biostatistical support for constructing and updating those toxicity estimates. Moving on to phase two and three designs, there are options of one or two stage designs. In a two stage design, patients are divided into two groups or stages. At the completion of first stage, an interim analysis is planned to determine if the second stage should be con conducted. The Simon two-stage design allows flexibility regarding null and alternative hypothesis, which also allows stopping for futility. Another design known as Bryant and Day design incorporates toxicity considerations into a design of two-stage phase two clinical trials. With expanding knowledge in tumor biology and biomarkers, oncology therapies are increasingly moving away from one size fits all approach. Advances in genomics, particularly in tumor sequencing, 
has improved our ability to differentiate cancers by their genetic mutations. This has fueled the efforts toward precision oncology in which therapies are selected to specifically target cancer on the basis of their genetic mutations. The examples of biomarker-based study designs include interaction design, enrichment and adaptive enrichment design, and marker strategy design. Under the interaction designs, both marker positive and negative patients are enrolled. Marker status is used as stratification factor and patients are randomized to treatment group within each marker-based subgroup. The interest or marvel trials for the non-small cell lung cancer are examples of interaction designs wherein both marker positive and marker negative patients are enrolled. Under the enrichment designs, both only patients that are positive for marker are enrolled. N9831 Trastuzumab study in HER2 positive breast cancer and TOGA trial in HER2 positive stomach cancer are the examples of enrichment designs. Under the adaptive enrichment design, unselected patient population gets randomized to experimental or controlled treatment and interim analysis is planned. At the time of interim analysis, if the experimental treatment effect reaches a futility threshold in a marker negative group, the enrollment of marker negative patients is terminated and the remaining sample size is reallocated to marker positive patients. And lastly, for marker strategy designs, this is specifically focused on the role of a biomarker in a treatment decision-making process. Patients are randomized to treatment strategy based on biomarker versus not based on biomarker. Examples of strategy trials include SHIVA or NCI impact trials. As you know, traditionally, drugs are approved based on tumor type. With the advances in the last decade, we now have genomically driven drug approval based on biomarker defined population within a tumor type. Examples include Vemurafenib approval for melanoma cancer patients with V600E mutation in the BRAF protein. More recently, we have agnostic histology approval based on a molecular biomarker that defines a disease, not an organ. Example is pembrolizumab approval in 2017 for patients with high microsatellite instability or mismatch repair deficient cancer. Master protocols. The term master protocol is used to describe basket, umbrella, or platform trial designs. In contrast to traditional trial designs, wherein a single drug is tested in a single disease population in one clinical trial, master protocol uses a single protocol to simultaneously evaluate multiple drugs and or disease population in multiple sub-studies, allowing for efficient and accelerated drug development. In a basket trial, one targeted therapy is tested on more than one disease or subtype of disease. In an umbrella trial, 
multiple targeted therapies are studied in the context of a single disease. On the other hand, in a platform trial, multiple treatments are evaluated simultaneously within a single protocol. With the inclusion of an adaptive design, it offers flexible features such as dropping treatment arm for futility, declaring one or more treatments superior, or adding new treatment arms during the course of a trial. As we discussed before, in a basket trial, patients with cancers of different histologies are enrolled. In the clinical trial, based on a presence of a specific molecular aberration, basket trials are generally used early in drug development. One of the key advantages of basket trial design is that it makes it more feasible to evaluate rare diseases. While using basket trial design, the potential risk of overlooking the impact of tumor histology type should be taken into consideration. As tumor responses could be different for different tumor types, although targeting the same mutation. For example, Vemurafenib, an oral BRAF inhibitor, has pronounced activity in patients with metastatic melanoma, but its activity in patients with metastatic colorectal cancer is only about 5%. Under the umbrella trials, different targeted agents are tested on a single tumor type. Umbrella trials are commonly used as mid to late phase studies. One of the advantages of umbrella trials is that it makes it easier for more treatments to be tested efficiently. One immediate advantage of umbrella trial relative to basket trials is the ability to draw meaningful conclusions that are specific to tumor type and therefore less prone to a chance of tumor heterogeneity within a given trial cohort. As a direct consequence of this, there is one great disadvantage of umbrella trials, which is overall trial feasibility, particularly within rare diseases. A platform trial, as we discussed, is a clinical trial with a single master protocol in which multiple treatments are evaluated simultaneously and allows adaptive features such as addition or exclusion of treatment arms during the course of a trial. Here are some of the examples of master protocol trials. Let's discuss few practical and statistical consideration and challenges that often affect the conduct and feasibility of trials with master protocol design. To be successful, a master protocol requires a close collaboration of industry, academic, regulatory, and medical community. With regards to statistical aspects, the sample size versus effect size trade-off is often an issue when defining the sample size. To keep the sample size small within cohorts and maintain overall trial feasibility, it is often necessary to target a large effect size. Inclusion of marker negative cohort is encouraged, but may not be feasible in certain settings. 
Another aspect is patients may potentially qualify for more than one targeted cohort on the basis of multiple positive biomarkers. Treatment assignment in such patients must be discussed as at the study design stage. In conclusion, in the last decade, we have seen tremendous advances, both in the molecular understanding of cancer and clinical trial design methodology. There has been a rapid increase in the use of master protocols in the recent past. And we anticipate that agnostic histology approvals will continue to grow. We need to continue working on improving the operational efficiency by development of innovative trial designs, strategies for early stage decision making, and early selection of candidate drugs with a high likelihood of success. Thank you.